them. Well done. You're all very well behaved. My goodness, the hush descends on the church. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Bonnie Rig Parish Church. We are thrilled that you've come to join us in the building. And for those who continue to join us online, we welcome you to our service. As you can see, it's a really special service today as it's communion. And it's really special, actually, because yesterday we had a wedding in the church. And Gray's daughter got married. You can see the beautiful flowers in the windows from that really special wedding. And I thought, how appropriate that we have a wedding. And then the next day, we have the wedding banquet, the feast that Jesus has prepared for us. You'll have seen um, bits and pieces of the notices, um, just a few to draw your attention to. We're going to chat about Alpha later on in the service, but just to give you a heads up, we're running an Alpha course. It's starting the 18th of September. It's going to be in the Pit Cairn, and um, again, we'll talk about it later, but please, it'd be great. We had a brilliant time the last time we ran it, so it'd be great for others to experience that. And also the Cyrenians have been in touch and they're going to pilot a pop-up pantry. How great does that sound? Um, there's a, um, posters will be up in the pit cairn for it and it's going to be a Friday morning. So this is a community um, project that would be great for you to get involved with. Okay, let's light our candle and remember that Jesus is with us. No Ben? No Ben? The rugby, might have known. <laughs> Next week, it was Ben's birthday. I was all ready for him to like, anyone else had a birthday? Anyone else? Anyone else has something special happen in their week? No? Nothing? No? Jenny, would you like, on behalf of Ben, to light our candle for us today? We light the candle reminding God's love and God's presence with us. There you go. Thank you so much. Let's join our voices together as we sing our opening hymn, Jesus Shall Take the Highest Honour.
Let's turn to the Father in prayer and we'll say together the Lord's Prayer, which will be on the screen. Let's pray. Great and wonderful God, we come into your presence with joy and with wonder, celebrating your goodness, acknowledging your love. Receive our worship. We come conscious of our own sinfulness, but rejoicing in your mercy, aware of our unworthiness, yet celebrating your amazing forgiveness. Receive our worship today. We come seeking to worship you, not just for these few moments or in this place or in one small part of our lives, in all our actions, all our words and all of our deeds, though the people we are and the lives we lead, receive our worship today. For all the ways we have failed to live as your people, forgive us. Lead us closer to you and teach us your will so that what we say with our lips we may truly practice in our lives for the glory of your name receive our worship today. And so as our family gathered, we join our voices together in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, DJ Club, you're sp- you're scattered all over the place, high and low, so um, all the congregation get to help out with this. Who likes a riddle? Anyone like a riddle? You like a riddle? Anyone, any of the grown-ups like riddles? Uh, do you know what? I can't be bothered with them. I just, they drive me mad. I just, it's too big for my brain to get round. However, I've found some riddles. You like riddles? Found some riddles and let's see how you get on. Now, he, the first riddle is one I remember from when I was little. And it says, what is heavier, a ton of bricks or a ton of feathers? What do we think? Any ideas? What do you think? A ton of bricks or a ton of feathers? What do you think? What do we think? The same, the, the same feathers. It doesn't matter. It's just imagine how many feathers you would need for a ton of feathers. That would be a lot of feathers. Okay, you got that one. Easy peasy. Okay, what has many rings but no fingers? Ooh, many rings but no fingers. Any ideas? Any? Telephone, absolutely. Although they don't really ring anymore. Everyone has a mobile and it makes a tune, doesn't it? So that, oh, I tell you, that's showing the age here. Okay, what goes up but never down? I can hear, I can hear all the cogs turning. Oh, what goes up but never down? Age, well done, was that what you were going to say? Well done, age, okay. Here's one. What question can you never answer yes or no to? What question can you never answer yes or no to? It's, are you asleep? You can never answer yes or no. Okay, okay, last one. We're beginning to weary, I think, with these. See, this is why I don't like them. I'm like, uh, I don't know. I just, anyway. What kind of lion never roars? What kind of lion never roars? The gardeners might know this one. A dandelion! Yeah! Well done! You were amazing at those! 
well done. And I was reading all about riddles and how actually, even though I'm not a fan of riddles because I'm just like, oh, it's too hard. Um, actually, riddles are really good for us because they help develop our thinking. They help us think creatively. They help us with problem solving. And riddles are fun, but actually help our brains to get stretched. And today in church, we are thinking about the mystery of God. We are thinking about how God is so gigantic and is so amazing, it's actually really hard for us to get our head around. The absolute hugeness of God, and he gets to be our friend, and we get to pray to him as dad. Oh, that can make our brain hurt because it's so big. But actually, we can know the confidence of knowing that we can trust in that huge, amazing God that makes our brain hurt because he's so amazing. Actually, knows our name and loves us so dearly. And we're going to sing about that love in our next song, which is Wide, Wide as the Ocean. Have a great time. I've had a sneaky preview as to your craft today, and you're going to love your time in the DJ club. So you can go over, and we'll continue in our worship. Ian's now going to come and do our reading as we continue in the book of Ephesians. Of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. 
Brilliant. Thank you so much for that reading, Ian. Let us now sing of that amazing grace that we hear of in our passage as we sing together. that on Communion Sunday, we get the opportunity to consider the mystery of God. We have heard Paul in his writing repeatedly saying, in Christ, in Christ, 
And then today, the theme, the word that keeps rising up is this word mystery, the mystery of all that Jesus has done. I wonder who enjoys a mystery novel. There's plenty of them in the pit cairn. You can see in the bookcase all these different mysterious stories that you try and figure out. It's a huge genre and people absolutely love it. There's something of the intrigue, the mystery that pulls us in to the story. As I was, when I was learning to drive, it came up on Facebook that it's been four years since I passed my driving test. Hey, I can't believe it, I'm still on the road. <laughs> and I remember my first lesson was with a guy from Bonnerig, actually. I got to know his wife, and he um, lives in Hopefield and has lemon squeezy. So I was there, I was in a very subtle, bright yellow car, <laughs> thinking, oh my goodness, shaking, terrified. And the first thing he says, he says, Louise, I'll, let, I'll explain to you exactly how a car works. So we're sitting there and I'm still ill, my stomach churning, so nervous. And he's going through the ins and outs of how it all, and the ignition, and it leads to this, and it leads to that. And I'm nodding politely, yes, okay, okay. No idea how any of it works. And four years later, I jump in my car put on the ignition and off I go. It's a mystery to me, but it's one that is just amazing that we, every single day, we have mysteries, things that can amaze us in life. Sometimes we forget to even notice them. Pressing a button on a phone and a message going to the other side of the world in seconds. How does that work? I have no idea. It's a mystery and it is amazing. There are many miracles that take place in our day all the time. And you can't explain it. Just like I, I always explained how the car works, you can't explain these things. There is reasons, there is a science behind it all. But just because we can't explain it doesn't stop it from being completely amazing. In fact, I think when you hear it explained, it makes it even more amazing. I remember at uni when we were looking at the Enlightenment period, one that Edinburgh especially really prided itself on. Oh, silly us. We've been naively following God. Oh, what are we thinking about? We can explain everything. Science became the big thing. Religion got bumped and science became what filmed our minds. The thing is, science and religion aren't separate. They are, in fact, completely intertwined. There's not one or the other. Science is not the enemy of faith. Science is our friend. It shows us how even more amazing the creator God is. We have no reason as people of faith to be at all threatened by science. In fact, I remember when I joined the church, 14-year-old at St. Catherine's Argyle, and I joined the church, and we had a wee group that used to meet in the vestry after church to go through the, the basics of the faith. And I remember in that group, there was a scientist who said he had no religious background, but through his studies in science, he'd become to search God. He knew that science itself didn't have all the answers, and he was looking for more. He was searching for the source of the mystery. And I wonder if our culture struggles a little bit with mystery. We want to work everything out. We want to have it all nice and bullet points so we know what's going on. But the Bible is absolutely full of mystery. It's not just in Ephesians in this chapter that we read. The Psalms, full of it, letters and poems, all describing the mystery of God. Yesterday, I was off at a presbytery meeting in Haddington, got up nice and early, driving to Haddington, and I found an old CD in the, well, I found an old CD in, in the house, actually, and I was like, you know, I've not listened to this for ages, put it on as I drove down. And as I was going round the roundabout onto the A1, the music was just so beautiful that tears started streaming down my face. There was something of the harmonies, there was something of the purity of the voice that was so touching and so overwhelming. And as I drove, I thought, ah, oh, there's the mystery. 
how a piece of music can touch your soul in ways that you could never, ever put into words. The beauty of the mystery (laughs) snuck up in me while I drove. The divine revealing itself in everyday moments, often when we least expect it. The beauty of something that we cannot capture in words, but somehow it captures us. I wonder if any of you saw the images from the moon. Did anyone see some good pictures? There was a big fancy moon this week. Ryan told me the best time to see the moon was at 2.30 a.m. That's handy. Set my alarm. All set. I thought I'll go for quarter past two. What about don't want to miss out? Go up, look to the moon. It looks fine. (laughs) Didn't look like I was like, I was totally underwhelming. He says, wake me up if it's really amazing. Everybody slept. It was fine. It wasn't that impressive. But I did see some other folk had managed to take some amazing photos of the moon this week. The night sky is a perfect backdrop to consider the mystery. I was reading recently an article by Philip Yancey, and he spoke of space and of galaxies in the universe, about the immenseness of creation. He wrote, scientists now believe that if you had unlimited vision, you could hold a sewing needle at arm's length towards the night sky and you would see 10,000 galaxies in the eye of a needle. Move an inch to the left and you find 10,000 more galaxies. Move it to the right, guess what? 10,000 more galaxies. He writes, there are approximately a trillion galaxies out there all encompassing an average of 100 to 200 billion stars. How mental is that? No wonder the psalmist wrote in Psalm 8, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, humans that you care for them? While the created world continues to be explored by scientists, the real magical mystery is that we get to talk to the designer. The real mystery, as Paul tells the Ephesians, is that we are united in God's purpose. Every single human on the planet called to unite, to be part of the maker's plans. While we think of the vastness of the world, the wonder of the galaxies, here is what's really, really special. The God of the galaxies chose to leave the heavens. If we can hardly get our head around all the galaxies and stars, how can we even begin to imagine heaven? The God of the galaxies left heaven and joined us on earth. Yancey's article said, pause and wonder at the mystery of the incarnation. In an act of humility beyond comprehension, the God of a trillion galaxies chose to descend to be with us. Chose to come and be part of this small rebellious planet out of all the billions that were available. He writes, according to Pong, that act of condensation proved to be a rescue mission that led to the healing of something broken in the universe. One that we celebrate together in this mystical meal. The mystery that Paul is writing to the church about is how this amazing and powerful life source is uniting humanity giving us access to God through Jesus, which is why this feels so special on Communion Sunday. We join with saints over centuries in remembering that simple meal that Jesus shared with his disciples, a group of men just sitting around a table having dinner together. And here we are 
followers of Jesus in Christ, we share that same meal. It looks very different, and yet we do so in obedience to Jesus and remembrance of him. Today, in our modern technical world, we still get to celebrate the mystery. And I think that there's a longing in all of us for connection with that mystery. There's a longing within humanity. Ecclesiastes talks about it. The Presbytery meeting spoke of an article in the Financial Times a few weeks ago, which was entitled, No Congregation, No Church, How Scotland Lost Faith. I didn't get to read the article, but I heard, and by all accounts, it was fairly bleak. And it was suggesting that actually the church had lost its way. We were becoming people who were just, you know, advocating for the poor or talking about different issues. And that's good. But it's our faith that makes us unique. And it's our faith that we're called to display. Anybody can do the help with the poor. Anybody can talk about climate change. We have something so unique We have access to the mysterious longing within us for the mystery of God. That's what we're called to do. That's what Paul was writing about in the Ephesians. It's displayed through the church. It's the church that shows everybody else the mystery of God. Let me finish with Paul's words in chapter 3. This was what he wrote to the Ephesians. In the end of chapter 3, it's words that were written to our church at Ephesus, but these are prophetically written for us today. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted, established in love, may have power together with all God's holy people to grasp how deep, how wide, how long, how high the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses all knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all fullness. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine according to his power that's at work in us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. And it has an exclamation mark at the end. Let's pray. Father, as our heads hurt at the vastness of life and the complexities of the universe, our heart warms at the tenderness of knowing that you sent Jesus to help us to understand what love looks like. And... You have given us the Holy Spirit so that we can display that love. Father, we pray that Paul's words to the Ephesians would soak into our spirit, that we would know the depths and width of the love of Jesus in new and amazing ways, and that we would know just glimpses of the mystery of the wonder of God. In Jesus' name, amen. We are now going to sing of the mystery as found in the grace of God as we sing together, only by grace can we enter. i
This is the Lord's table. You are invited. You're invited to come as you are. You're invited to come with your aches and your sorrows and your longings. You're invited to come with your joy and with your gratitude. You who are dearly loved are invited to come. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with us all. Let us pray. Gracious God who invites. Gracious God who provides. We bring our offering to you. We present this bread and this wine at your table. For all things come from you. Blessed be your holy name forever through Jesus our Lord. Amen. We have spoken already. This tradition came from the Lord himself, who on that night he was arrested, the Lord took the bread and gave thanks to God. He broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do so in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup and said, this is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you do, whenever you drink it, do so in memory of me. For every time we eat this bread or drink this cup, we proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. As Jesus took bread, today here in Bonnyrigg, we take these elements, bread and juice, set apart from common use to this holy use and mystery. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. We accept the invitation to come to the table and we remember. We will now distribute the elements. Please take a cup with the bread, a cup with the juice and hold it or place it in the pew. And then when everybody's been served, we'll take it together. Thank you.
taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who find refuge in him. Take, eat. This is my body of Christ, which is broken for you. Do so in remembrance of him. This is the cup of the new covenant. Drink from it, all of you. Let us pray. Glorious God, we thank you for your love which brings us food from heaven. The life of your dear son which assures us that we belong. Grant that we may be strengthened by this fellowship and by the Holy Spirit, that we may continue the work of Jesus in the world today. And may the blessing of God the Father Almighty, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. We now turn to our very special time when we pray for others. But before we do, we're going to show a clip um, which you'll find on our Facebook page. Um, it's promoting the course, the Alpha course. What we noticed in the Growing Project forums was lots of people had talked about how big an impact the Alpha course had been in really deepening their faith and asking some of those questions that they hadn't felt able to um, but were able to do on the Alpha course. So, um, we're going to watch a video now. Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather going to be like? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions, like why am I here? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? arrived at an answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with, is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. And I was supposed to be a scientist. At 28, I had gotten many of the things that I thought I wanted. You know, my girlfriend was on the cover of magazines, I had a Beamer, and I was so unhappy. It was a realization maybe that I would, I would never find happiness where I was looking for it. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strived to be strong in myself. All I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, would be like invincible. But the truth is, none of us are. And I found purpose, I found meaning, I found hope. God took something so broken and made it a beautiful art piece. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself. You can say what you think and challenge everything. No, no question is too complex or too simple. And what your point of view is, is as important as anyone else's. We are going on a journey together, an adventure to explore the questions of life, faith, and meaning. adventure begins in Bonnyrigg, the 18th of September. We'd love for lots of folk to be part of that adventure. And maybe you know some friends or neighbours or family members that you think, ah, oh, 
I think going on that adventure would be so good for them. Let's turn our hearts to the Father and let's pray. Father, we thank you for the amazing work of Alpha. Father, we thank you that a project that started in a church in London has now been taken all over the globe, goes into prisons, goes into villages and towns and cities, goes into schools, goes into pubs, as people gather to question, to learn more, to seek you. Father, we thank you for the work of Alpha, for the many, many lives that have been transformed by a simple course, looking at who Jesus is, looking at issues around the Christian faith. Father, thank you that in these discussions, your Holy Spirit moves and changes lives. Father, we pray for the Alpha Jew to start in Bonnyrigg. Father, we pray for hearts to be stirred to come along, that people would get a sense of um, real excitement at the course that's running. Father, we take such delight knowing that the Catholic Church is also running an Alpha at the same time. We don't think that's a coincidence by any means. And so we know your spirit is moving. Father, we pray that you would give us courage. Give us courage to ask our neighbours. Give us courage to ask our family members. And Lord, we pray for the right people to come who would grow and learn and um, understand you in new ways. Father, we long to see more and more come to faith, come to know that great mystery. And we pray that you would use Alpha as a tool to do that. Father, as we pray for the Project Alpha, that it work in so many churches, we pray for your church, for your worldwide church, people all over the globe worshipping you in multiply different um, voices and languages and styles and traditions. Father, we pray that you would be glorified in your church and glorified in your world. Father, we especially remember those who gather to worship you with great risk attached, those who live in countries where faith is not allowed, and yet they continue to meet. Father, give them the strength, give them the protection that they need. We remember them. Father, we know this world is full of so many needs. We know that there are many areas of conflict and division. We thank you for the words of Ephesians that reminds us that we are one, we are united. And we continue to pray that you would break down division, helping one another see what unites us rather than what divides us. And so, Father, for us gathered, we know each one of us have had so many different encounters this week. We each have friends and family who are unwell, who are struggling. We ourselves may be dealing with all kinds of issues that nobody here even knows about. Father, thank you that you do. And Father, thank you that you are close. In the quiet, we name to you the things that are troubling us, knowing that you hear the prayers of our hearts. Father, thank you for the gift of prayer. 
thank you that we're able to bring all our concerns, all our needs, bring them to you, knowing that you are bigger and stronger than all of them. Let us take your hand in all that we face this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us finish our time together with our final hymn, Meekness and Majesty. hearts as we live Jesus wherever we go. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.